Today's problem, the ugly stage or new stage of my tank is relentless. These are the top 10 things to get you past this. Starting with number one, and that is an ounce of patience is maybe the only cure. This happens to everybody, the ugly brown, we call it the inevitable. So if you can just power through it and be patient to get to the other side, this uh, will not be your problem. We've actually done some experiments in the back uh, where we cycled a bunch of tanks and there's miracle cures. Uh, but one of those miracle cures actually happens to be just waited out. Yep. That can be really hard. Uh, the tank looks terrible and it's in your living room and everybody's yelling at you about how ugly this thing looks. And every time you see it, there's a little bit of shame. But often if you just wait a month or two, the whole thing will clear itself up. And then because it did it naturally, it probably won't come back. Number two, you could just turn the lights off because a lot of these brown, ugly, nasty looking things are photosynthetic, meaning that your lights on is fueling the problem. Turning them off, even turning them down could probably help. Turning them off would help. Uh, it depends on what your tank goals are. Yeah, I mean, this is like, if especially if you have no corals in there and you're having a bunch of ugly stages, mm -hmm. you can actually just kind of reboot this, but turn the lights off and watch it all go away. And also keep in mind uh, of like how bright the lights really are, yeah. especially if you don't have a par meter, because if you just crank them up, if you have LPS levels, uh, you might be as low as 50, 75 par in many cases. Uh, and the high end of the SPS range is you know 300, which is six times that. <laughs> That's six times the photosynthetic energy and it grows all kinds of pests. So if you're just gonna have an LPS tank, you might not actually have a problem with the photosynthetic energy, but no man, when you're just pounding it with light, mm. that you might grow some undesirables. Maybe the patience is the best key. Number three, you could use the built-in acclimation modes that are in most LEDs these days. Using those modes increases and slowly brings me to more intense light rather than just packing it all in there at once and just hitting them uh, 100%. Using those acclimation modes over like a month or two months to get you to your goal uh, can actually uh, help to, for the non-photosynthetic or the uh, better, or the good things biome that you want in your tank to actually take over before the photosynthetic ones do. In fact, I, I have found if you're not going to use at least that uh, acclimation mode, trying to tune it to a pocket of LPS first, see how the tank does there, mm. and then finding your way to the SPS rather than just bam, hitting it with all that light has a higher percentage trajectory. Number four, if it's LG is your problem, get some tanks, man. <laughs> uh, the tang gang, that's all they do all day long, every day mm -hmm. is eat LG. Uh, there's different types of mouths uh, out there. So uh, your yellow tang, purple tang, all those things, you know, they eat different things than uh, the bristle tooth tangs, like your uh, white tailed. So, you know, you can actually mix and match and you'll go after different types of longer or filamentous mm -hmm. or the beginnings of LG. Uh, and so tanks, man, if you never, if you didn't hear anything else today and LG is your problem, tanks your solution, even if they don't fit into your current tank right now, cause you think it's too small, get tiny little ones and they'll just be okay with moving them to a new home when they're done. Number five in that same vein of thought, if sand being dirty or brown or ugly is your problem, then get something that solves for the sand. So your sand sifting goby, star, uh, you know, sand sifting starfish, the Neisseria snail, something that keeps that sand bed churning. You're probably gonna have to do some manual uh, also cleaning of the sand. Uh, we do have uh, this same problem solvers for sand and dirty sand, so check that out. But if sand's your problem and dirty sand's your problem, there are solutions out there, animals that can fix it for you. Number six, if it's cyano or that red slime that's tanking over your tank, don't be afraid of a uh, chemi-clean or of a uh, red slime remover. Yeah. I use those things all the time. They are a great solution. And two, like an inevitable problem a lot of people have. In fact, I would say this is like the easiest possible solution to get rid of your headache of slimes. Number seven, if your slime problem doesn't get removed by Cami Clean or Red Slime Removers, if it has bubbles, if it's kind of brown and snotty looking, it may be dinos, in, the, in which case we have a five minute guide to help you solve for those. But uh, dinos are probably your issue, if, especially if that Cami Clean or Red Slime Remover is not taking care of the, uh, the problem which case we have a bunch of solutions to help you solve that. Yeah, one of the biggest uh, signs that it's dinos is this guy didn't work, as well as if I turn the lights off, uh, yeah. almost all of it goes away mm -hmm. inside of 24 hours. Well, and the moment I turn it back on, it just takes over the tank. 
probably dino is a bigger problem, check out the five minute guide. Number eight, you still haven't solved that ugly, nasty brown stain. It's time to try something else like bacterial solutions. Now, used consistently, these could probably work. If you're trying to like pour it in the tank one time and see everything disappear, you might uh, end up disappointed. But using things like Microbacter Clean on a regular basis or Waste Away could eventually take uh, that problem and just eradicate it over time. Actually, on uh, Dr. Tim's website, there's a little card that says, here's your problem, uh, here's the solution. <laughs> so I, uh, if you're you, expecting that miracle overnight solution added in and it disappears, kind of like uh, the can be clean and stuff works, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't work that way. You actually have to follow instructions and be okay with the fact that you're not going to see instantaneous results, but you are going to find the end of the rainbow. Number nine, at least check your nutrients. Uh, you know, there's no magic thing because each one of these uh, pests in your tank that could be causing the ugly stage thrive in a different environment. Mm. Some of them are theorized to thrive in a uh, zero, zero, uh, zero nitrate, zero phosphate environment where they outcompete the other things that require those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, uh, you know, the opposite end of that of 100 and 100 is a <laughs> terrible idea as well. So at least, you know, check the nutrients, check phosphate, nitrate, where it's going, and it can be part of making sure you're not feeding the solutions or creating, you know, abnormal environments where certain things thrive. Number 10, you can consider pods to help you out, uh, specifically when there is a food source. So, you know, I've got some brown kind of hanging out in the tank. Uh, throw some pods in there. What you don't realize is, you know, these are tiny little vacuum cleaning machines that often clean up some of that brown stuff. Maybe you don't notice it right off the bat or apparently, but if hair algae or brown suddenly starts disappearing and dissipating after you added some pods in, uh, these little vacuum cleaners are probably doing their job. Yeah, for me, this is a miss. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that eventually the tank is going to get pods. It's going to come on, you know, uh, the you know some coral yeah. or it's like almost impossible to keep pods out of the tank. They'll populate to whatever the food source is eventually. But it's actually in the beginning. What mm -hmm. we're talking about today, where they're the most valuable, is their microfauna scouring the surfaces, looking for stuff to eat. And I've seen tanks that were overrun with algae and the <laughs> pods actually just wipe it right out. Algae doesn't go away magically on their own. It's like rooted algae is either eaten uh, by tangs or dies off and flows away. It doesn't just slowly disappear <laughs> like that. So pods, uh, are, you know, a predator of algae, especially the kind that you can't see, so you never even know you had the problem. All right, if you want the actual steps, <laughs> uh, how to actually beat all of these things, we have a five minute guide on virtually all of the pests that we talk about today and how to get them out of the tank. They're in the playlist right here and you can see the actual steps to make this not your problem.